There is a battle of theology happening in real time. A recent documentary came out called Cessationist, and it's about the position that the gifts of the Spirit in terms of miracles and signs and wonders have ceased after the apostles went to go be with the Lord Jesus. But in this documentary, there's some shots fired. I just wish everybody can get along, but they can't. And in those shots being fired, there were additional shots being fired and something a bit ironic with regards to this entire conversation. Now, when I say, can't we all just get along? This is what I mean. Cessationist, there's a wide spectrum of cessationists. There's some, there's some cessationists that legitimately don't believe God moves today. And, and, and that would be the French. And, and, and those people would believe that in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, when it talks about that which is complete is coming, those people believe that the complete is actually talking about the scripture being canonized. Okay, that's a pretty fringe view. Most people believe that when Paul's talking about that which is perfect, that which is complete is coming, they're talking about Jesus, the second coming of Jesus. So there are folks all the way on the other, on that extreme. There are some folks that even go to the extreme of believing that Jesus, because Jesus is the word and the Bible, is the word and therefore Jesus is the Bible. Yes, I know it's a minority, but those folks do exist. And then there are folks who are open to God healing, are open to God moving, but everything is, you know, prayer is really about praying for the will of God exclusively. And every spiritual gift or seeming spiritual gift kind of gets categorized as the gift of discernment. All right. So I got a lot of friends like this and they, you know, they don't believe in words of knowledge. They don't believe anything prophetic. They don't believe that God can speak in supernatural ways. They don't believe in dreams and visions. They don't believe in any of that stuff, but they do believe in the gift of discernment. Okay. And, and, and so they would just kind of categorize that in that regard. Um, and of course, on the charismatic end of the spectrum, there's the name it, claim it, blab it, grab it folks. There is the hyper charismatics, AKA charismaniacs. And there's everybody in between, right? There's folks that believe you got to speak in tongues to be saved. There's folks that believe if you don't speak in tongues, you don't really have the Holy Spirit. There's a wide spectrum here. And this is my frustration, and I'm going to really double down on this at the end. My frustration is that we don't spend enough time talking to each other, and we spend too much time talking past each other, and we often straw man different positions. And so there's a big controversy about this new movie called Cessationist. In that movie, there is a conference seemingly in the spirit of Strange Fire coming, and which again, I will have really strong critique for this towards the end, so make sure you watch till the end. But my, my, my deeper issue with this, as someone that is charismatic, who is a continuationist, who is, I would say charismatic with a seatbelt. I believe in the gifts for today. I Even in, even tongues, even healing, right? I believe that stuff is for today. Uh, but I am not always embraced by that community. So this documentary comes out. Can we pull out just the, uh, like, a, like a trailer of the documentary or something so that we can give them some context? I haven't seen the full documentary. It's been sent to me. I haven't had a chance to watch it, but I figured let's look at it. Uh, and, and these folks, God bless their hearts. I would say they're attempting to be good Bereans. They're really looking at it through the lens of holding scripture in high regard, which I'm not mad at. The issue with that is sometimes you don't let the scripture clearly communicate what the scripture says. So you got you got that pulled up, Zach? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here is the documentary, uh, the trailer, very well done. Somebody has the gift of miraculous healing. Surely all he needs to do is to prove it. But let's face it, we've been battling with COVID and the so-called miracle workers went into hiding together with us. Cessationism is the view that certain miraculous gifts that stood as signs of an apostle, speaking in tongues, healing, prophecies, interpretation of tongues, gifts like that, ceased with the apostles. Cessationism has fallen out of favor because commitment to the authority of scripture has fallen out of favor. Okay, okay, no, 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 that, no, no. Bold claim. That's a bold claim. As if everyone who holds to the position of continuation is, has, has a low view of scripture. And... I just think that's that is unequivocally false. You could say some people in that camp may hold a low view of scripture. You could say some people in that camp weaponize God told me in the God told me card. And, and I've had plenty of critique for those people. And those people don't really like me. Okay. But to say that the reason why this stuff's happening is that people have a low view of scripture when there's an obvious elephant in the room that I'm going to get to at the end of this video, it's either like completely detached and in an echo chamber or it's just flat out disingenuous. I don't really see a third option. When you turn on Christian TV, you don't see expositors of scripture. 
John MacArthur or Steve Lawson, you see Joel Osteen, Joseph Prince, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, Joyce Meyer. Yeah, Paul I'm Hall. not a fan of any of those folks. That, but how is this an indictment on all continuationists? Keep, keep going. Right. That's who you see because that's the mainstream. Speaking that's of the mainstream. Mm -hmm. Tongues. You're going to speak out of your spirit. Don't worry about what it sounds like. Speaking in tongues must be guided by the scriptures, not our feelings. They were known languages that were capable of interpretation, and not everybody speaks in tongues. If God speaks, it must which, be. Whoa, 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 which I agree with. Uh, not everybody's going to speak in tongues. So this get, this get, this this catches me backlash from my continuations, brothers and sisters. Allible, inerrant, and authoritative. And the Lord said to me, "Will you howl for me?" I said, don't ask me to do that, Lord. Whoa. Come on, son. Hey. They're pulling deep cuts from the 90s. Listen, Woo. I uh, I do not co-sign that. That doesn't seem like a church service at all. This seems like something, I don't know what this is, but this feels like a kink that needs to be shamed. This seems like folks that need a seatbelt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. Some of y'all need a seatbelt. So when I say charismatic with a seatbelt, that seatbelt is the word of God and reason your brain that God gave you to not do goofy stuff like that. Your intrusive thoughts is not the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, your intrusive <laughs> thoughts ain't the Holy Spirit. You God telling you to do something? Yeah, never mind. Let's keep going. There's no longer the need for the gift of prophecy, speaking forth divine revelation from God. We have now the whole counsel of God. This word is the final word <laughs> the apostolic gifts of god they were never intended for okay. our generation okay they're doing a conference around this right i mean they're really waving this flag high you know it's i always just find it telling when the entire movement of something is is more or less anchored as being against something right you're, you're basically mm. even the marketing of this is you got the the what is it the todd whites look at the video playing in the background like it's, it's all the bad things it's all the bad things right so we're not like we're not like going towards anything we're just pointing out all the bad stuff okay and i think in that the the critique because again john MacArthur is a part of this john MacArthur is a very famous uh cessa cessationist sometimes not all the time but the critique is that folks who flow in these continuationist circles I would say friends of mine that I've publicly disagreed with, that I've had on my channel, I've disagreed with, I've been on their channels, I've disagreed with. The streams have overlapped between the prosperity and the and and, and all charismatics and Pentecostals, which I which I'm not a Pentecostal, but we're just using that word interchangeably. So play this John MacArthur clip real quick. Years ago, the prosperity gospel was just a small part of the larger Pentecostal charismatic movement. Now it has swallowed the whole movement. Mm -hmm. The whole movement is predicated on giving people the products of God, but not God. The products of Christ, but not Christ. Pa now, uh, the, the hasty generalization fallacy is on full display. These are extremely bold claims by someone that, outside of him talking about this and Calvinism and some of his dispensational views, has some good Bible teaching. But... These are some bold claims to say that everyone who's a part of this is a, is a swindler, okay? And I'm going to get to why here in a moment, and then there's a punchline. Go ahead. They're not looking for Christ. Let me have Christ whether I'm sick or well. Amen. Let me have Christ whether I'm rich or poor. Amen. Let me have Christ whether I'm alive or dead. Let me have Christ for my sins and Christ for my guide and Christ for my power and Christ for my King. Amen. I don't care whether I have anything but Christ. That's not what you hear today. John MacArthur has a $15 million net worth. I'm not mad at John MacArthur for having a $15 million net worth. I'm really not. But this notion that everyone who is charismatic is a swindler, while John MacArthur has multiple properties all across Southern California, in some of the most expensive places of, of the world, to live, multi multiple properties, that you don't care to pray for progress in your career, progress in your finances, progress in your relationships, and that anyone that, 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 that does care to pray about those things, that desires to get uh, uh, some degree of breakthrough, is, is a swindler all the way. All this comes full circle amazingly. So, because again, the claim that, why is this relevant? I'm going to tell you, Travis, listen very carefully to me. What was the claim? Those who are charismatic 
are selling the products of God without God. They're swindlers. They're money hungry. I don't know how you make that sort of claim by putting your name on a study Bible that you sell, making amassing a fortune, millions and millions of dollars, $15 million net worth, am amassing multiple properties around Southern California, yet anyone who desires these things is a swindler and is money hungry. And let's look at the price of the conference. Now, this is, the, this is something that, that, that has them catching backlash from even some people in their own camp. That when you go to the, the, the price of the conference, ladies and gentlemen, this is a $300 conference that's happening at John MacArthur's own church. And children, students, age 6 to 17, is $249. Something is not adding up. If it's all about just not, never, never selling the word of God and never fleecing the word of God and never doing all these things, I don't understand the, ju the justification in saying these guys over here who, who, by the way, don't charge for any of their events, as far as I know, in terms of— Who's these guys? We should define that. Specifically the, the Demon Slayers guys, who oh, I, ha okay. I have public disagreement with on a, on, on, a, on a couple of things. You can watch my interviews with Not them. the Benny Hens. Not the, the Benny Hens. Okay. I'm not talking about the Benny Hens. I'm specifically talking about my brothers from Remnant Radio and my brothers who I'm, who I'm close with, uh, Saldivar, Pagani, those guys, who I disagree with on things, all of that. I don't— they're, they're about to do an arena, a 20,000-seater arena for free, for free. Now, they take up a, a, a donation and what have you. They don't charge for deliverance, which, again, we have some disagreements on what that may look like. But their events are free, and the accusation is they're money-hungry while at the same time doing an event at your own church in your own venue. That's Grace Community Church. That's John MacArthur's church for $300. While having a $15 million net worth and your name on the Bible, a commentary Bible, which again, I am not the one saying that he's money hungry. I'm just saying this is oddly ironic. The, the, the sheer irony and the sheer detachment and the sheer lack of self-awareness is insane to me that you can make these sorts of accusations about guys who are not charging anything while charging $300 for a conference and $249 for children. In, in all of this, and again, I got, I got I, my, my, my deeper issue is is not even this, though. My deeper issue is something else. Here at the top we have, um, he says, Benny Hinn shamelessly says to poor people to give to him even what little you have left. Which is, wait, which is wrong. But Justin Peters does loop in these guys with the Demon Slayers. He he, he loops in. Correct. The, so then this person says, cessationist conference, $300, but it's Benny Hinn free will offering you're criticizing. Okay. That's, I mean, that's, that's a very solid response. Mm-hmm. This is a really good observation. Go back. Uh, the conference costs two ninety nine a person, and no doubt offerings will be taken and materials will be sold. Will there be vendors as well? Each speaker probably makes a decent honorarium. Maybe not. Uh, of course they're making a decent honorarium. Of course they're charging for this. Of course, this is going to be a multi, probably a multi six figure, if not a seven figure event, which I'm not mad at. Get to the bag. Do you? Okay. Yeah. And, and so here's his response. It costs a great deal amount of, of money to put on a conference. Okay. No. Yes, it does. However, while it's at your own church with all your homies as the speakers, I have some pushback for you, Ruslan. Sure. Okay. We threw an event. All the homies were speakers. Mm -hmm. No one had to fly in. Mm -hmm. At a local church that we that we were able to give a uh, a, a, a small amount to, but not a considerable venue fee. Correct. Three hour conference mm -hmm. in a sense pot live podcast was really dope and i think the mo the most expensive vip ticket was it 79 or 89 it was a hundred dollars the our most our most expensive ticket which came with a meal was a hundred dollars for three days or for three hours mm -hmm. theirs is 299 for three days mm -hmm. so and we also know at the end of our event we didn't even break even i mm -hmm. I think we we ate a couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So, is it possible that there's behind the th scenes things going on when it comes to logistics that actually do cost a lot of money? I'm sure they're they're profiting some because they're they're shrewd business people. But is it a uh, such an insane amount that uh, it's worth to poke at? Oh no 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 no! I don't have a problem with them charging for it. Okay. I have a problem with them charging for it, trying to shame other people for not charging, assuming their motives, and then being upset when you're called out on it. That's my issue. I just said, get to the bag. Mm. 
Get, okay. get to the bag. I don't have any problem with them charging for it. But stop acting like it costs a great deal of money to put on a conference when you're the pastor yeah. and you're and all the, you're the guys. Headliner. <laughs> that, that's not the same thing, bro. Yeah. I have no problem with them charging. Yeah. The, the hypocrisy is what I have a problem with. Gotcha. That is a that is the difference. So let's read through his response. Because I'm not mad at the response. All I'm saying is, all I'm saying is, if I'm pastoring of a church and it's me and all of my own folks. I think it's a bit much to say it costs a great deal of money to put on a conference. I think he's mm. reaching there. Okay. I think he's reaching there. I don't know if it costs a great deal of money to put on a conference at the church that you're speaking at. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of organization, yes, speaker travel, and lodging expenses, food, equipment, ven venue rental, depending on location, and no, no, and no, no other offerings are taken. Okay. So, I, again, I don't uh, help me understand how there is. It doesn't matter. He's talking about paying for a venue that they're part of. Neither here nor there. To charge for tickets to recover at least some of these costs is far, far cry from, from what Benny Hinn does. Benny Hinn, approximately half a century, has promised the poor that God will give them miracle money, which, which is bad, if they first give their money to him. For half a century has promised sick people healing if they give their money to him. And to quote him, uh, what little you have left. I have personally seen him promise a mother with a young son stricken with high... I, I'm assuming that's some sort of bad condition to sow a seed god would heal her little boy that's disgusting yuck yuck uh benny hen has made himself a multi-millionaire who lives in palatial homes. homes drives luxury cars wears luxury clothing and flies private jets on the backs of the poor and sick if you can't see the difference between these two scenarios then you are being intentionally dishonest no malachi this is not a good observation it is more evidence of a shocking lack of discernment if you wish to continue to defend a man who shamelessly tells poor and sick people to give him money in exchange for God's blessings, may he have mercy on you. Okay, so I don't think anyone's pointing this out to defend Benny Hinn, because I think Benny Hinn is trash. Yeah. I think what we're talking about is someone who is saying that everyone who's a continuationist and believes in the gifts of the Spirit is selling the products of God without selling God, that they're compromised, that they're, that they're false. That's a bold claim. You're basically saying that they're wolves in sheep's clothing— uh, uh, wolves in sheep's clothing, that they're not saved, that they're false. I can have a disagreement with Justin Peters and John MacArthur and all these guys and uh, some of the deliverance ministry stuff. I don't, I'm not jumping out the window and calling anybody false. I'm not saying anyone's not saved. I'm not saying, I'm not saying anyone's trying to get rich because on the surface, it's the Spider-Man meme. We could do that to each other. We could say, oh, well, John MacArthur has his name on a study Bible. He is living in, um, you know, multiple Southern California homes with a $15 million net worth, and you're accusing these guys over here of being swindlers. Like, that just seems sus. It's easier to say someone else is a, a scammer mm -hmm. or is doing it for the wrong reasons uh, when you believe what they what they teach is heretical. Correct. In, inversely, it is easier to justify earning large amounts of revenue mm -hmm. When you believe you're doing it, when you're on the when you're on the right team, when you're on the right team, because yes. large revenue just means high volume, which means a lot amount of people yes. are getting the right message. Correct. So in their head, they don't they're not able to detach themselves from their own paradigm yes. and put it through the demon slayer's perspective, because mm -hmm. the demon slayer's perspe perspective would be the same thing. If we're making any money, it's because there's a large amount of people being it's impacted. Sheer, it's just sheer volume. Yeah, large amount of people being impacted with yes. the right message. Yep. And so to think that they're both doing it for wrong reasons or both of them making revenue is bad. Like yeah. they're not charging people $5,000 a ticket, like yeah. $299, still relatively affordable. Yes. You know? Yes. So here's the punchline in all of it though. And this is the deeper issue that I, I personally, I think isn't just sad. It isn't just discouraging. It isn't just divisive. It isn't just passive aggressive beta, beta behavior. I don't know how else to describe it. Yeah. The fact that all these guys from the Justin Peters to the John MacArthur's have historically ran from debating anyone from the continuationist side. That to me is a joke, respectfully. Dr. Michael Brown has been openly challenging John MacArthur for a decade on this since they did the first Strange Fire conference. The Brothers from Remnant Radio has publicly offered to debate anyone on this topic. So the fact that you are going to do a conference while questioning people's salvation who have a disagreement on secondary doctrines 
and you're not willing to debate, you're not willing to go into the lion's den, that to me is, I, I just, I don't, I, it doesn't get any weaker than that to me. Like, and not only is it divisive, not only is it not good for the body, because by the way, I don't hear Dr. Brown saying that these folks aren't saved. I don't hear uh, Remnant Radio saying these folks aren't saved. I don't hear the demon, player, uh, demon, demon slayer saying these folks aren't saved. Deliverance Ministries are making roaring, is it making a roaring comeback, but all of them are fraudulent. All of them? All of them. All of them. <laughs> he actually emphasizes. All of them. Left to right. Vlad, Mike Signorelli, Daniel Adams, Catherine Crick, Isaiah Saldivar, Greg Locke, Alexander Pagani, etc. are frauds. Want deliverance? Here's much better, an infinitely more effective option. Yeah, so so here's the issue. We could disagree on deliverance. This man had That's pictures fine. too. When you start saying things like fraudulent, when you start, right, nah, nah, that's different. I would never call John MacArthur fraudulent or a fraud. I don't care what the documentary said, John. You're missing the point. This is the guy in the documentary. What are we talking about? You got the guy in the documentary saying things about deliverance ministries that they highlighted in the documentary. He didn't have to say it in the documentary. Yes, I stand by it. All deliverance <laughs> ministries are fraudulent. 100%. <laughs> Fra Google the word fraudulent, please. If you're going to use such bold language, be willing to, to, to get into the lion's den and sit down with a Dr. James, uh, uh, excuse me, a, do a, a Dr. Michael Brown. Fraudulent. Obtain, done, by, or involving deception, especially criminal deception, unjustifiable claim, or being credited with particular accomplishments or qualities. <laughs> especially criminal deception? You cannot look at that and say that's okay. You cannot look. And again, I've had Pagani on. I've had I've had Isaiah on. I I consider Mike a, a close friend. All these guys, I'm, I'm I'm friends. You cannot say that that is okay. You cannot say that's okay. We can have disagreements. We can have in house conversations. But you cannot say stuff like that. All the limits ministries are fake. Well, first of all, you can say whatever you want to. You can say whatever you want to. But to say that. And not be willing to ever debate? Come on. You you ducking and jive. Yeah, well, I don't know. Where the I, I don't want to take that. I don't want to sit down and debate. Why? Why? Why don't you want to debate? Who's Dr. Michael Brown? Why don't you want to debate? You're talking about a scholar. You're talking about somebody who who's debated on the side of Dr. James White before, who's friendly with Calvinists. But you don't want to debate. You don't want to debate the remnant radio guys. I wonder why. Is it maybe, just maybe, that you know? You haven't spent enough time with the continuationist arguments. You haven't sat down with any charismatic folks and actually understood the history. That tongues didn't just magically appear after the Azusa Street Revival. Oh, God was silent for 1,900 years, and then in the Azusa Street Revival, people just started faking it. That maybe there's a robust history that you're ignorant about, and therefore, you're, you're dodging all the smoke. That, to me, is just extremely cringe weak, hypocritical, and ironic. You, you, need to, you need to sit down and, and debate. I don't care if it's Mr. Johnson, John MacArthur, Justin Peters. This whole, let me throw, let me throw rocks and hide my hand is mad corny. It's, mad, it's, it's, it's unbefitting of guys of their pedigree. We see according to the Bible that prayer is extremely important in terms of us being transformed from the inside out when we get aligned with God's will. I want you guys to implement these spiritual disciplines in your day-to-day -day life. And the only way I've been able to do this consistently is through writing down my prayers in a prayer journal that does a few things. One, it allows me to reflect and come to God humbly and ask him to move on my behalf. And two, it allows me to document my prayers which ultimately helped me remember the very things that I was praying for and see the hand of God tangibly in my life when he answers them. So I would urge you, consider writing down your prayers. It could be in a blank notebook. It could even be on your phone. Or you could check out the one I personally designed and used for my own quiet time and spiritual discipline that I think would be a huge blessing. It's the exact structure and system that I've used for years to pray and be more consistent in my spiritual disciplines. And here's the thing, with the hope to create a prayer movement, we've made the PDF version of this prayer journal completely free. So to get the PDF of our prayer journal completely for free, go to blessgodpdf.shop 